Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the differences between upper motor neuron versus lower motor neuron lesions. Concepts of motor system part 3. So the differences between upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron paralysis. Upper motor neuron or supranuclear paralysis versus lower motor neuron or infranuclear paralysis. But what exactly constitutes the upper motor neuron? and what exactly constitutes the lower motor neuron. Upper motor neuron has got two components, corticobulbar fibers and corticospinal fibers. The corticobulbar fibers are the fibers which originate from the bed cells, area, uh, layer number 5 from the motor cortex and goes up to the motor part of the cranial nerve nuclei. This is corticobulbar fibers. The corticospinal fibers also originate from the bed cells, the layer number 5, but goes up to the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. So, upper motor neuron is the motor neuron which is above the nuclei of either the motor part of the cranial nerves or the motor part of the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. So, corticobulbar fibers originate from the motor cortex and go up to the motor part of the cranial nerve nuclei that is corticobulbar fibers. Corticospinal fibers originate from the motor cortex and go up to the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord that is corticospinal fibers. So both upper both the components that is corticobulbar fibers and corticospinal fibers both components constitute upper motor neuron. Fine. What is lower motor neuron? Anything below the motor part of the cranial nerve nuclei or the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord is lower motor neuron. So the nerves coming from the lower, from the motor part of the cranial nerve nuclei as cranial nerves and the nerves coming from the anterior horn cells as the nerves, peripheral nerves, both constitute the lower motor neuron. So the lower motor neuron also has got two components, one the motor cranial nerves, second the peripheral nerves coming from the anterior horn cells. So upper motor neuron has got two components, corticobulbar fibers and corticospinal fibers. Lower motor neuron also has got two components, the motor part of the cranial nerves and the peripheral nerves coming from the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. So now let's see what are all the differences between the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron. In upper motor neuron, muscles are affected in groups, never individual muscles. Muscles are affected in groups, never individual muscles like abductors, deltoid or abductors can get affected, wrist extensors, finger flexors can get affected, triceps can get affected, supinator group of muscles, supination, these muscles can get affected. They are affected in groups. So basically abductors and extensors in the upper limb are affected and in the lower limbs the uh, flexors, hip flexors, hamstrings and dorsiflexors are affected. So muscles are affected in groups in upper motor neuron lesion. Whereas lower motor neuron lesions, individual muscles can be affected. For example, if C5 gets affected, biceps, individual muscle, infraspinatus, rhomboids, deltoid or supraspinatus. So individual muscles can be affected if it is a lower motor neuron. So the first difference is that muscles are affected in groups, never individual muscles in upper motor neuron lesions. Whereas lower motor neuron lesions, individual muscles are affected. The second important difference is that there is no atrophy at all. And if at all there is atrophy in upper motor neuron lesion, it is because of the diffuse, disuse. So either there is no atrophy, if at all there is any atrophy, it is because of the disuse atrophy. Whereas if it is lower motor neuron, atrophy is very much marked, up to 70% of the total bulk. The classic example is the motor neuron disease, the poliomyelitis, they have severe atrophy. In fact, you, you can only visualize bones so much the muscles are atrophy that only they are all bones. 
so atrophy is very much marked in lower motor neuron lesions whereas it is very slight and if at all it is present it is a because of the result of disuse so that is the second point the third important point is that in upper motor neuron lesions there is spasticity with hyperactivity of tendon reflexes and extensor plantar reflex what is known as babinski sign so spasticity means there is an increased tone so the tone increase hypertonia what we see in corticospinal tract lesions is known as spasticity it is again it could be class nice spasticity if it is pyramidal tract or cock wheel uh, type if it is a extra pyramidal type so spasticity it is hypertonia <coughs> seen in the flexors of the upper limbs and the extensors of the lower limb and it is clasp knife initially it is difficult and later it becomes easy to open it up that tone is becomes easier so initially only there is a resistance but then it becomes easier at a later point of knife very nicely compared to the clasp knife this is spasticity and when we try to elicit reflexes the reflexes are all brisk for example biceps supinator triceps knee ankle jack all the reflexes are brisk it is because the corticospinal tract upper motor neuron tries to inhibit these reflex arcs so once there's a corticospinal tract lesions upper motor neuron lesion there is no inhibition so these reflexes become manifest become exaggerated and there is hyperactivity of the tendon reflexes and third they have extensor plantar reflex known as babinski sign when we try to elicit the plantar response imagine this is foot and as we come from the lateral part towards the big toe the big toe goes upwards and the other toes goes for fanning this is known as extensor plantar response or babinski sign the big toe going up is the most important component so if it's an upper motor neuron lesions there is a spasticity there is hyperactivity of the tendon reflexes and extensor plantar reflex known as babinski sign on the other hand on the contra the other end of the spectrum in lower motor neuron lesion it is flaccidity and hypotonia of the affected muscles so there is tone is decreased it is hypotonia and the reflexes are diminished and they may be absent also and plantar reflex if present is of normal flexor type the third the four this is the third important point the fourth point is that the fasciculations are absent in upper motor neuron lesions whereas fasciculations may be present in the lower motor neuron lesions especially anterior hansels so fasciculations are involuntary muscle twitchings but what is the mechanism of fasciculation it is because of canon's law of denervation supersensitivity so once the anterior hansel becomes affected it becomes supersensitive to its neurotransmitter and therefore it starts responding even if it is not directly interacting with it so when the anterior hansels are partially affected when it is denervated it becomes super sensitive to its neurotransmitter and therefore in the anterior hansel gets affected it becomes super sensitive and therefore it starts responding and then there is involuntary twitching so it is known as canon's law of denervation super sensitivity so fasciculations may be present in lower motor neuron lesions especially anterior hansels like poliomyelitis and motor neuron disease and finally when we do nerve conduction studies it is normal and there is no denervation potentials in emg whereas in lower motor neuron lesions there could be abnormal nerve conduction studies and as i said when the anterior hansel gets affected there will be fibrillations there will be fasciculations positive sharp face which can be picked up in emg electromyogram we can see the fasciculations and fibrillations so these are all the important differences between upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion a very very important and a basic concept which has to be understood with clarity so upper motor neuron or supranuclear lesions versus lower motor neuron or infranuclear paralysis the upper motor neuron consists of both cortico bulbar and cortico span fibers lower motor neuron consists of the cranial nerves and the peripheral nerves and these are all the important five differences between upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion hope you have understood and enjoyed these concepts the other important concepts i have put in a book called focus neurology which is in a question and answer format which is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon if interested this could be 
bought online the other book is the exam oriented clinical neurology book uh, wherein all the important concepts of clinical neurology like history taking neurology examination hemiplegia and paraplegia i have put it in the book it will be very very useful for your clinical neurology exams especially undergraduates so if interested this book also could be purchased so i hope you have enjoyed listening to my concepts uh, if you have really enjoyed these concepts please like my channel share my link but please do subscribe to my youtube channel dr sinos medical concepts and my fb page dr sinos concepts thank you bye